Uh, Nima, we should kind of remind our, our, our viewers about the, the circumstances of this trial. You've got a 59-year-old father uh, accused of killing his young son, Dylan, and it's alleged because Dylan and his, his brother saw some pictures of the father uh, maybe cross-dressing uh, on, on camera uh, and also committing a, 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 an act that people would just find disgusting. I, I won't repeat it here, but uh, there, there's some salacious details surrounding this case, right? No question. You know, the, these pictures are disturbing, to say the least, and the alleged motive for the crime. And you know, what the prosecution is trying to show here is really the strange relation, the strained relationship, excuse me, between father and son, someone who uh, would normally be very excited to see his son after some period of time. Uh, apparently, right before um, this incident, there was a fire at uh, the home, and there were some renovations done. So. You know, Mark hadn't seen Dylan for quite some time, but really, I, at least we all got the sense that, um, you know, Dylan didn't want to see his father. Uh, father wasn't very excited to see his son. And that's part of the state's theory in this case to really show this very strange, bizarre, strained relationship between father and son. Right. And then when we fast forward to the, the actual murder, uh, there, there's forensic evidence, DNA evidence, blood samples, actually. Uh, found in the home, uh, then also the body parts of the son uh, dismembered, found in two different places. His, his, his body found, you know, one year and then the next year uh, his skull was found uh, and, and not far from the family home, right? Yes, you have that blood all over the living room and the carpet and the coffee table. So that's very, very powerful evidence for the state. You have the cadaver dogs that picked up scents, you know, in the laundry room and in, uh, you know, Mark's vehicle. And then you have this really dismembered body. Um, the skull obviously suffered um, blunt force trauma. There's evidence of knife marks, you know, and found years and uh, really miles apart, so the body was dismembered. Really kind of heinous, brutal murder here, not really consistent with someone who just kind of walked off and, you know, a relatively older boy who was maybe attacked by animals. Again, that's going to be the defense theory in this case. Not particularly plausible, um, given the physical evidence that we found at Mark's home. Right. So as this case, you know, goes forward, do you think we'll hear from the defendant, the father here? Would he... Would it be in his benefit to, to testify? I generally think it's not in a criminal defendant's benefit to testify when there's strong evidence in this case. But, you know, we know, and maybe it's just been, you know, our luck as a prosecutor, former prosecutor, you love it when the defendant testifies because you can just go after him. And imagine being cross-examined on these really sort of just damaging photographs of him, um, you know, cross-dressing and, you know, wearing a diaper. And I won't get into the rest of it, too. Um, it's about lunchtime here in Los Angeles to keep everyone's food down. But it would be a devastating and brutal cross-examination by the prosecutors in this case. So I don't expect him to testify. But ultimately, it is the client's choice. It is the criminal defendant's choice. And we've had a string recently uh, on the Law and Crime Network where we've gotten fortunate and the criminal defendant has testified and mm. we've seen those fireworks. Absolutely, and we thank you for sparing us the disgusting details. Our viewers can, can Google it on, on their own there. Uh, we're following the state of Colorado versus Mark Redwine. Uh, more of the case and the testimony that's ongoing ahead.